Hey everybody, Eric Knight here for another episode of Natatorium Knowledge. My guest today is Steve Crocker with Water Technologies. He is uniquely qualified to answer this question. How big is an Olympic pool? Steve, thank you for being with me. Thank you, Eric. This is a very interesting question. You, you would think it would be, would be pretty obvious what an Olympic pool is, but it's really not. Most people who have seen like a high school pool that's 25 yards long, mm -hmm. they think that's an Olympic pool. That's yeah. kind of why I wanted to talk about this because it is a confusing thing. And then you don't realize there's actually 25 meters too. So yeah. d dive into this. How big is an Olympic pool? Yeah, an Olympic pool is precisely 50 meters in length. And that is after the touch pads, which since the finishes, after the touch pads are installed, it cannot be less than 50 meters in length. And ideally, every lane is the same or extremely close because uh, you want a pool to be as fair as possible. And if one lane is just a, a little bit longer than the others, that swimmer would have a disadvantage. So 50 meters is the length of each swimming lane in the Olympics. Okay, so 50 meters. Now compare that to most pools that we see in our community centers and our YMCA's mm -hmm. and all over the United States. How big are those pools? Yeah, well, the, we do have a lot of 50 meter pools. Uh, you know, a lot of the big university pools and are 50 meters in length and, and, and even some YMCA pools and even quite a lot of high school pools are 50 meters in length. But all NCAA swimming and all high school swimming in this country are conducted in a in a 25 yard distance. So that's 25 yards. That's 75 feet. Yeah, compared to 164, which is 50 meters. 50 so meters. wow. So you, we have 25 yards. There's also 25 meters. Um, yeah, that would be what world, 82 feet. Yeah, 80, roughly 82 feet. Now, what most of the world does is they swim 50 meters whenever they have the chance. You know, there's a, a long course season. And that's typically the summer. And there's a short course season where people are predominantly swimming indoor pools. And that short course season is in a 25 meter pool. And in the United States, we are very odd. We don't really use short course meter. We don't really use 25 meter pools very often. Mm -hmm. Our short course season in the United States is almost all 25 yards. Is that common? Are the outdoor pools more often 25 meters for these HOA community centers? I would say so. A lot of them were built back in the 70s when we all were uh, planning to switch to meters. And uh, that really didn't really happen because, uh, you know, I think the fact that NCAA never made the switch and high school never made the switch and it just mm -hmm. never, never happened. We did it in track and field very, very easily, you know, um, switching from yards to meters, but uh, it's, it's, it's a little more expensive to... Uh, it's a lot more expensive to, to build make a pool, a pool than bigger. It is to re restripe them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, do you see it ever happening? I do see it happening. I hope it happens. Um, I people can routinely switch back and forth there. You know, if you can train in a twenty-five yard pool and you can race in a twenty-five meter pool, it's not that challenging. And in fact, the, the world record that I broke uh, in in the fifty in the short course uh, fifty meter freestyle mm -hmm. that in a 25 meter pool. You know how many times I trained in a 25 meter pool leading up to that? Maybe two or three, if ever. Zero. Zero. Because you're, you know, that's right, because you were in a college pool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, you can easily switch back and forth. So I think it, it's logical. There's a lot of good reasons to switch, and it wouldn't require anyone to build a new pool. It would just require that new pools, when we're designing new pools, we need to be thinking, what should we, what should we do? you know, 25 meters or 25 yards. But if you've got a 25 yard pool, you can still host meets in it. The NCAA high schools, you can still host meets in it. Just understand that the championship meet has to be meters, the meter pool. So uh, I think over time, you know, it's going to take many, many years, but uh, if there's no better time to do it, why not do it now at the NCAA level, for example, could do a lot like what they have done in track and field. They have a indoor season and they yeah. have an, season. They oh. have different courses. So we could have a, the NCAA could have a, a, a fall season and that season terminates in a 25 meter pool. And then we could have a spring season that terminates in a 50 meter pool. And, and that would benefit all the international athletes we have. They, all the international athletes would get, you know, real times that, uh, that the rest of the world would, would even uh, be interested in. So, yeah. The only problem with that is we'll never see if anyone can go 17 in a 50 free again. 
Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the real challenge here. Right. Uh, and those records, you know, it, it's a matter of will people be shaved and tapered to have a crack at those records? And that's really yeah. the big question because record boards are a big driver in competitive swimming, yeah. as you know. You know, people get hung up on the records and, you know, if... I'm uh, one of them. I get hung yeah. up on the records. They're incredible. You know, but we, but Eric, we change the rules all the time. That's and, true. I know. I, I could do a broken, brush and pull yeah. out different than yeah. the, my right. predecessors and, right. and my records have bro- been broken since in, in yeah. my college team and uh, they did, they only lasted a few years. But now, you know, you don't even, you could do your dolphin kick. You could do a dolphin kick during a pull out and you could do it before you even split your hands. Yeah, all of that was out. It, it was absurd in 2004, and here we are in it, 2020, and it's a completely different pullout. And if you're sneaky, you can sneak in the second dolphin kick. Well, well, <laughs> if you're unethical, you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, simple question for us, but for the audience, uh, what does LCM, SCY, and SCM mean? We see these on swim meet results. What do those mean? Yeah, LCM, long course meters. Okay. Yeah. If that's when you race in a pool that has the course 50 meters in length. Short course meters is when you're doing it in a 25 meter course and short course yards, which is when you have a 25 yard course. Okay. And that's the standard right now, but you know, potentially yeah. you can change some meters. Okay. Awesome. Well, it's pretty easy to, to visualize how if, if a yard is smaller than a meter, obviously a yard time would be, would be a faster, you know, a yard record is to be faster. Right. But, uh, you know, many people are surprised to hear that, the more turns you do, let's say you swim the 1500 meter freestyle. You can swim that in a 25 meter pool or a 50 meter pool. If you do it in a 25 meter pool, you're having to stop and turn around and go the other direction twice as much. Mm-hmm. People think then you would, that would be slower, but believe it or not, the turns speed you up. Because, because you push off the wall. All the extra push offs you get. What a swimmer really wants to do is maximize the percentage of the race in which they are moving faster than swimming speed. So this is why dolphin kicking has become a big thing. That's right. That's why now underwater kicking is setting records. Okay. So um, the last question here is, in your opinion, as a pool designer, you mentioned earlier equal lanes. What does that mean for depth? Let's talk about an Olympic pool. An Olympic pool has 10 lanes. Each lane is 2.5 meters wide. We have very few Olympic pools in the United States. And the reason why is we're still focusing on yards. So our long course, our 50 meter pools are not Olympic pools because they're typically only 25 yards wide. Mm -hmm. A Olympic pool is 25 meters wide. Which allows you to have two more lanes. That's right. So that's an important distinction. Yeah, that is an important distinction. Uh, Even though you only race eight lanes, yeah, you have a in, buffer lane on the outside when you watch the Olympics. Yeah, and and in the and and that's considered uh, important to make the pool more fair because if they didn't do that, then the lane lane number one and lane number ten would would not have a lane line next to them, mm-hmm. and therefore they those lanes would be considered inferior in some ways. So a lot of times, what what's being done now, Eric. Uh, pools are now sometimes done 26 meters wide. So you can race 10 lanes and each lane is two and a half meters wide. And we do an extra half meter next to lane one and an extra half meter next to lane 10. So it but seems then, but then you have this meters. odd, yeah, you have this odd stroke count meters. if you're training the other way. Yeah. But those pools are, again, are, are, are typically the temporary venues that are, that are, right. For, for those championship level meets. So you designed the, or you were part of the design team for the Olympic trials pools, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. How big were they? They've changed a little bit over the years, but the last one in, in Omaha was 26 meters wide. But then, then again, there was no side lane. So we weren't no. crisscrossing. It was only the right. venue. Okay. It was yeah. a beautiful pool. It was, you did, you even, did great. It wasn't even, it wasn't even striped in the cross pool. And in the, I think is a really good point too, Eric, you know, when we always are talking about fast pools and I think it's really important when you design pools to put a lot of thought into the striping so that it's, so that it's sim- as simple as it can be. Yes. You've probably played a little basketball or a little volleyball and you know that when you're on a gym, on a gym and if it's marked, if that gym floor has black marks for basketball and green for squash and 
and red for volleyball pretty or, soon. Or the two three-point lines, one for yeah. pro and one for collegiate. Yeah. It's so confusing. They stopped, they stopped meaning anything. And the same thing can be true with swimming. You know, that, the location of that tee is critical. And, it, and there are six different tees on the bottom of the pool, and you have to figure out which one corresponds to your bulkhead or your turning wall. Right. Uh, that really does affect performance. It does and, get confusing. I totally agree with you. Simplify everything. Yeah, and if if the NCAA or or a high school never switches to yards, or I'm sorry, never switches to 25 meters, at least a couple things could be standardized. The location of the T in your lane could be standardized. Right yes. now, the NCAA T is five feet from the wall, and a, a USA swimming T is six foot seven from the wall, or two meters. Two meters. The thing is, backstroke flags are not even located in the same location. Backstroke flags are either five yards for, for NCAA pools or five meters for USA swimming pools. So those, those, those are no-brainers that I think need to be standardized. One thing I loved about the trials pool, by the way, is the tees went down almost to the bottom of the pool. Mm-hmm. A line just went down, so we didn't have to pick our heads up. Man, that makes it so much easier to see because now, oh, yeah, there's clearly where the tee starts. That's the wall. I've got it. Check the rule book for international swimming. That's what they have in terms of of the, the tees. NCAA, high school, USA swimming, mm-hmm. they all have a, the tees the on the wall all look a little different. So standardizing that is really a, a smart, a smart move in my, in my opinion. And it's, it's, it's not a costly move either. It's just tile really. Now you yeah. got to wait until it's time to resurface the pool, but right. I'll tell you, we had an all tile pool. It would not be that hard to cut out a little bit more tile and drop those T's down. I'm a big advocate for it. I totally agree. And for those of you watching out here, um, we will be pushing to make some of these standardizations. We're both in the industry, Steve and I, and Steve's on the design side. I'm on the chemical side and somewhat the design side for natatory air quality. But Absolutely. Um, we'd love to hear your voice in the comments below. If you care about these things too, we do. Of course, we're both retired swimmers at this point, but um, Never. I don't want anybody to break their middle finger like I did yeah. <laughs> because tees are different. So, uh, Steve, thank you so much for being on this. So, this is Steve Crocker again from Water Technology. Uh, what is it? WTIWorld.com. If you want to see some of the cool designs they do, great designer. He is the expert for this topic. And today you learned how big an Olympic swimming pool is. It is exactly 50 meters from touch pad to touch pad. Steve, any final words? No, this has been a great topic. Thanks okay. for having me. Awesome. Thank you, Steve.